Hey, everybody, it's Dave Travis from Leadership Network, and I'm so glad to join you today. I've got a special friend with me. It's somebody that we talked to maybe five years ago when one of his other books came out. I've got Tim Irwin with me from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, you know, Tim, we did an interview when you first came out with the book Derailed, and I love Derailed. And I know you've got a new book coming out, and I did want our pastors uh, throughout the world to know about this book. But before we get there, tell folks a little bit about yourself. Well, Dave, it's great to see you again. I can't believe it's been five years. I, I think you, you, you've got to be exaggerating in terms of how long. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. <laughs> but uh, seriously, it's great to see you. Uh, probably the most important credential I have is that I am a believer. I'm a follower of Jesus. And and so uh, as I share these things today, that's, that's the thing I want to emphasize. But my job is an organizational psychologist. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so I work with corporations. I also work with ministries and churches. Um, I, uh, I have a PhD in psychology. But uh, again, what I try and pray for every day is wisdom from, from the scripture that, that I can help people based on uh, scriptural wisdom, not, not what I've necessarily learned. Um, I also have a ministry background. I, I came to faith when I was in college and joined the staff of CREW for a number of years. Um, I've worked with a number of ministries since then. I'm a, a, an adjunct professor at Reformed Seminary, and so uh, I spend time with them periodically as well. But that's basically who I am. I'm married to a wonderful woman named Anne, have two sons, two married sons, and five grandchildren. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, they, they, they showed up all of a sudden. Well, good. Well, now you know that I loved Derailed. I thought it was a landmark book uh, for all leaders, but especially Christian leaders, um, how is impact, which is subtitled Great Leadership Changes Everything, how is that different from Derailed and all your other previous books? Well, Derailed documented the problem. If you remember, I wrote about six CEOs who had been fired by the boards and why they were fired. And the same principles apply to anybody in ministry or in any leadership role. And I described some stages that leaders go through when they derail. The new book is about how not to derail. And really, it's about how to make an impact with your life. And, and the reason so many people don't make an impact is because they violate these fundamental principles. I wrote the book around Proverbs 4.23, which most of us know, uh, guard your heart uh, above all else, for it determines the course of your life. That's the New Living Translation. And that word heart if we put it in contemporary terms, is really about our core. It's guard our core. It's, it's the, the, the Hebrew mind didn't make this distinction that we do between our brain and our heart and so on. It's just the core, the person inside us. And what the, um, the writer of Proverbs is admonishing us to do is to guard that with all care. Another translation says, with all diligence. And so the new book is about how to do that. And people that do that are much more likely to make an impact and they don't go down this terrible path of personal destruction. My guess is that if I ask everyone uh, watching this video program to think of somebody in ministry that they know that's derailed, they could think of at least one person that's gone down that path, that personal path of, of destruction that is so terrible to watch. I think when a corporate leader derails, it's bad. I think when a ministry leader derails, it's tragic. And so what I'm trying to do is to, is to get this message into the hands of people who are in ministry because I think it's so important to guard your core. You know, one of the things that um, uh, there's going to be a special offer later in our interview here uh, that you're going to have for pastors to get this book for free uh, here in the United States at least uh, and have it sent to them. So please stay tuned to hear about that offer in just a second. You know, the other thing, Tim, this book, you, you write, to a corporate audience, but also to a leadership audience. And so that's why pastors may want this book, not just for themselves, but for other leaders within their church that serve in other settings. Um, now, most of the pastors that are watching, they want to make an impact. And you have this three faces model in the book. Say a little about that. Yeah. And David, if you would, it might help to put the slide up of that model. Um, and by the way, as you, as you bring that up, let me just say that I, I, I am going to make this book available to people in ministry because I want so passionately it to be there for them. I also think this book will help them understand many of the people who attend their churches or who are involved in their ministries because this is about uh, how they think and how they work. And what's in front of me now is what I've called the three faces model. 
And I think it helps me better understand uh, what the problem is. And if you think of leadership in these three faces, the outward facing style is style. Um, John Stott died a few years ago, but before he died, a few years before that, I had seen him preach. And I'll never forget this day as I watched John preach. I don't think he moved one inch to either side. He literally stood behind the podium and for 45 or 50 minutes delivered what I have to believe is one of the most powerful messages I've ever heard. And the entire church of several thousand people was glued to his every word. But his style was very restrained. In other words, his style was that of using the power of his ideas. We also know people who are very effective in ministry who have a more outward style. They're more flamboyant, maybe, or they pace around the, the, uh, the stage or do whatever. Uh, so this is about style. It's a, it's a behavioral epidermis, if you will. Yeah. And I think people can have an effective style or not. But um, the second face of the leader is our conduct. That's what we do as a leader. If you operate a church, you have to build a staff. You have to create leadership in your church. You have to organize. You have to delegate. You have to create teams. You have to convey vision for where the church is going. <clears throat> and so this is the conduct of a leader. This is the competence factor, if you will. And a minister has to be effective at these to run a good church or to run a good ministry. But the third face of the leader is what I'm passionate about. And that's the core. That's that person inside us. That's what we've been talking about. And, and Dave, I really believe that this is what determines whether or not someone is ultimately making an impact. If they have an intact core, if they've been diligent to guard their heart, uh, to really take care of it. And so that's why this person of the leader, I think, is just this critical dimension. Not to say that the other two aren't important, but every single person I've ever studied who derailed, did not derail because of a problem with style or a problem really ultimately with their confidence. It was more to do with their character, their inner core. And in derailed, you probably remember I said that character trumps confidence. Absolutely. In fact, you know, in this new book, in the Impact book, you have some uh, portraits and composites and, and actual cases where uh, people had blind spots that they were unaware of. What, what are the biggest blind spots that you see among leaders in your experience? Well, as you recall, I've also said that lack of self-awareness is a common denominator among people that derail. And so some of the things that I see that really bring people down that often they're not aware of, they're blind spots, if you will, they just don't see them, are arrogance. And I've said that arrogance is the mother of all derailers. And we know that's scriptural. I mean, that's, that's basically what scripture says. It's, it's uh, pride goes before the fall. And so uh, arrogance is something that brings people down. And here's the key. This is, what's, this is what I really developed uh, in the new book, Dave, and that is that power is what leads to arrogance, unrestrained power, unregulated power, if you will. Power is a good thing. Power helps us to get things done. And many of the people listening to this call think, well, I'm not in the power. Or I don't have power. But the fact is you have great influence. And that's really the same thing. You have great influence. And as your church grows and develops and prospers, you have greater influence. And power erodes our core. That's the fundamental thing. And so when, we, when we're not aware of how that process works, it really begins to erode us. And before we know it, uh, we're going down that path of personal destruction. So lack of self-awareness. Another one is how we treat people. Now, most of, most of the people that I know on this video presentation would say, well, the whole reason I went into ministry is I care about people. But sometimes we can very unknowingly slip into these things where we diminish people, where we uh, think people are not important, or worse, we think that people are really here to serve us. They're here to help us accomplish our ministry. They're here, here to help the church prosper and so on. And so I think what I'm saying is self-awareness is the cure for that. And uh, just as self-awareness, lack of it is a, is a common denominator among people that derail, I found that good self-awareness is a common denominator among people that really make an impact. Got it. Now, you, uh, you of course, are driving people to examine their core. What are some of the most important ways that anyone can build and grow their core? You know, I think one of the most fundamental things that I talk about in this new book uh, called Impact is that healthy introspection. You know, I was reading uh, the Psalms the other day. David says, uh, uh, 
you know, examine me, know my anxious thoughts, let me know what is offensive to you. I mean, David, is, his prayer, and his self-introspection are all kind of rolled in together. And so I think most of us who are believers have a quiet time in the morning. In other words, we have a time of personal reflection where we meditate on God and on his word. And I think a healthy part of that is just to say, Lord, you know, know me, uh, know my anxious thoughts, try me, examine me, and point out anything in me that offends you or is not, not in keeping with your will. And so I think that's a critical piece of this is that healthy introspection. I think another thing is that we have to really be in tune with our errant beliefs. I go into great detail in the book about how when we believe the wrong things, we act the wrong way. Proverbs says this, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And so the key thing is that we've got to understand the beliefs that we've allowed to get into our belief system because ultimately those roll out into our behavior. And the third thing I guess I would say is that, and this is a very powerful uh, way to guard our core, is personal accountability. Mm -hmm. And I would say that if, if, if the people on this video presentation don't have a couple of close, trusted advisors with whom they can really let it all out, uh, that's, that's just a critical piece. It's a foundational piece. And I find that people who have power, who don't have accountability, are the ones that are most likely to get in trouble. Yeah, that's so true, and so true uh, as well in the experience that we've had at Leadership Network. Now, I know you have some friends, some donors that are making a very special offer for pastoral leaders in the United States to get a free copy of the book. Um, and I'm going to flash a slide up here uh, that uh, I hope will get us to that slide here. Here we go. There it is. Uh, yeah, and because uh, you're asking um, folks to send you their name and their shipping address and a phone number just for the shipping purposes. Exactly. To the not, email not, address here. Right, exactly. We're not collecting this information for any other reason than just to get the book to you. And by the way, I did have some some people had stepped up who'd read this book and they said, we think this, the message of this book is so important that we want to get it in the hands of people who have great influence in the world of ministry. And so they are doing this uh, out of their own generosity, but also out of their conviction that you need to read this book. And so my hope is that you'll, you'll take advantage of this and that you'll uh, just go to that email address, just put in, put in your name, a physical shipping address. I don't think we can use post office boxes, and uh, just your phone for, again, for the delivery service. And uh, we're just asking that you do that pretty promptly, uh, that you do that uh, by uh, January 14th, let's say. And uh, if you could just get that, get that turned in. I know that's quick, but it will just take you two seconds to respond to that email. But, again, just know that people uh, are praying for you and want, which, want your best, and they feel this book is a critical part of helping you grow and develop as a leader. It will ultimately help you make a great impact. Yeah, that book is scheduled to ship very soon. Uh, and so if you would like, if you're a pastor, a free copy of Impact, Great Leadership Changes Everything from Tim Irwin, uh, just uh, go to bookoffer at irwininc.com with your name, your physical shipping address, and your phone number. Do that this month uh, as the books will be shipped very soon. Tim, I want to thank you for joining us. Do you have any last words for our pastors out there? Dave, the thing that I say over and over is guard your core above all else, for it determines the course of your life. If you want to make an impact, you've got to guard your core. If, um, if you want to go down that uh, terrible path of personal destruction, then don't guard your core. This is a very biblical message, and I just cannot stress enough how critical it is that we do this. And I just want to thank you and, and your organization for inviting me to be on the program. And it's just been delightful to reconnect with you all these years later and also <laughs> your audience. Well, I enjoyed both. In fact, if you haven't read Derailed, I would encourage you to go to uh, your local bookseller or Amazon or ChristianBooks.com. Look up Derailed by Tim Irwin. Also, pre-order if you want to get some extra copies to hand the friends of Impact. Uh, leadership changes everything. I, I would say this one thing. Um, we're going to have a discussion guide on the website. That'll be up in a couple of weeks, and that's drtimirwin.com. And this is the kind of book that I would encourage you to go th uh, take, go through and study the book Impact with your leadership team. If you have a board of elders or a session or a diaconate or whatever, uh, 
this is a really powerful book, and all those people who are serving leadership in your church should be aware of this, should be aware of the critical importance of this. Uh, Exactly. Well, thanks, Tim, for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you, Dave. Great to be with you.